Hello, my name's Emma. I'm a speech and language therapist. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. Um, today I'm going to talk a bit about the transition from being a student speech and language therapist to being a newly qualified or qualified speech and language therapist. Also known as speech and language pathologist elsewhere, it is the same thing. Um, sometimes I forget to clarify that, so yes, well. What I'm going to do is do a bit of an introduction about myself, how I got there, which I also have a, another video that's a bit more detailed about that if you wanted to have a look at that. And I'm going to talk about the perks of being a student, the perks of newly qualified and kind of like the transition from being a student to then being qualified and kind of how I felt, what kind of went on, what actually happens. Um, and everything like that. Let me do my introductions first. So like I said, my name's Emma, I'm a speech language therapist. I qualified in July 2022, yeah, July 2022, and I have been working for nearly a year now. So I qualified in July 2022, I went into my job in September 2022, after a little bit of a break and travel and lucky things like that, I really enjoyed it. I did my masters from, September 2020 and obviously qualified in July 2022 and then I've been working for a year since then. I did my masters at City University in London and I'm still based in London now so I'm currently working for an NHS trust. In the UK you tend to either go in for private or the NHS which is the National Health Service which I chose to do because generally you get lots of experience and support and things like that which is initially what I wanted. So, let's get into it. I've got my little notebook here. Let me show you. Sorry if you can hear like the plane outside. It's quite a nice light though, because it's like early evening here. I say early, it's like 20 to 8, maybe it's not early evening. I've got my notebook and I've just written some things in here about perks and non-perks. I couldn't think of the word. Like positives and negatives of both being a student and qualified so I'll start with being a student um, perks of being a student was general the general lifestyle I enjoy being a student I like learning and I was basically full-time learning and then had school-esque holidays they weren't quite as good as the school holidays in the UK but they're still very good so we still got a month in the summer still got a bit of a break over Easter and Christmas but they were for river for revising similarly to other courses but generally a great perk for the general lifestyle. I also treated it, my masters, more like a nine to five job because my housemates I lived with were working nine to five and everyone in London kind of has that lifestyle. Um, apart from students, obviously, well, stu I'm, by students I mean like undergraduate 18 year olds that are going out partying and stuff, which I still wanted to do, but just on the weekends when I had like treating it more like a job, I guess. And then, the next one is I guess kind of related to that in one way is having no responsibility. Uh, my only responsibility was my course which I'm very fortunate about and I did work alongside it but also the same applies on placement so what you do is you study and then you have placements in between your studies or whilst you're studying um, and you're placed in different areas of work as an SLT so you could be based in a school you can be based in a community clinic you can be based in a hospital you can be based in a prison there's just a variety of things you could be based in and you kind of do that alongside your course and a perk of of that is when you are there because you're a student you're not fully responsible all the time so that responsibility is on your practice educator obviously you have your own responsibilities but generally it comes down to your practice educator. Uh, the other one is kind of related to that is as a student, I felt like I could ask questions all of the time and not even have to articulate them that well sometimes just because I had that title of student, especially earlier on, I felt like I could ask all the questions and although sometimes it was like a bit of a stupid question probably, I wasn't made to feel that way and I also didn't kind of have that attitude in my head, which I'm really glad I didn't because now looking back, like I did know nothing well not nothing but I was learning so it's fine to feel all of those things and want to ask those questions and I think it's important to. I think as well is when I was doing a placement I found it easier to switch off so 
lots of the placements I did were quite emotionally draining and taxing but because one I wasn't responsible and two I wasn't doing it full time and going it back to it all the time I was able to kind of switch off from it and although I remembered certain patients and certain people in certain situations I was able to switch off and not lose sleep over it not that I do a lot now or anything like that but because it's your student you're not responsible and it's not your whole life it's kind of easier to switch off and kind of dissociate again when you go home and another thing as well in relation to that is that placements do end so if you're not enjoying it you don't like it it does end you've got to complete it and you've got to pass but that placement does end eventually and you don't have to do it ever again if you don't want to and like I said my last one was the summers which I loved and then the negatives which kind of tie into some of my positives so this is not negative really but as a student you do have less autonomy your project practice educator who's the person that you that works in the place of work that is, has you as a student so they take you on they have their own timetables and they fit you into their timetables and you fit into their timetables which is fine but the flexibility is just less so than for example now when I have more control over when I see patients and things like that obviously there are still limitations and it depends on your workplace I'm sure some workplaces are more flexible than mine is now but generally the flexibility is less as a student and again a criticism is placements do end some of my placements I really loved and they're places that I would love to work in but they do come to an end which is often quite sad at the end although you're happy to have completed it and passed and done all of those great things it is they do come to an end and it can be quite sad um, especially if you've enjoyed placements. One placement I nearly cried at the end because I didn't want to leave and my practice educator was great. Um, another criticism of placements which I, I, have, I understand both sides is that you're not paid. You pay to do the placements and especially towards the end of my course where I did feel like I was actually quite useful to have <laughs> and things like that. You're not paid for them so you are paying to be there but I don't think that's the attitude that you should ever take because otherwise you'll go in there feeling really bitter. So I think it's kind of like you're learning from them, you're paying to learn and get great opportunities from these people. One thing I found on some placements, not all, is that I wasn't really included as a team, as a student, especially if you were there for one day. Like sometimes, some, some placements were really good and others really weren't. And it was kind of like, a, you're a student, so you have lunch there and we're... Actually, it sounds really bad, but only one of my placements was like that. And it's just a bit like separate and like, I don't know, like, a, oh, you have your lunch then with this other student and then we'll have lunch after together. Like, I don't know, I didn't really like that. So you weren't as included as teams, whereas in a place of work, you'd hope to all be included. So that's for being a student. And then perks of being a newly qualified therapist is, like I said earlier, more autonomy. Also the consistency with your work. So you go in every day, or if you work full time, you go in every day, you know what you're getting the next day, you're in control of your own work, it's more consistent, you don't, unless you go away for weeks on end, like you don't miss out on much and you're not like out of the loop, which sometimes you can be on placements if you're only there, especially one day a week, you end up being out of the loop and you don't really know where patients are, whether they're still there, um, whether you're still seeing them, etc. Whereas you do get that in a full time role and as a newly qualified therapist it's paid big plus you get to know the team and you work well with the team i feel like more experience with multidisciplinary team working asking general questions just things like that that you just get used to chatting to these people and then you can ask them work related questions too and you feel more comfortable doing that whereas as a student i always found that harder because you don't know them as well and you're still learning their roles and things as well as a student so a lot of that is working that out also i liked and i think it's really helpful whether you like it or not i think it's really good is that you are kind of thrown in you are then responsible for lots of people um or children or patients and although you've got supervision like you are responsible to seek that supervision if you need to and in a way if you know how to drive I feel like it's like driving like you always have your driving instructor with you or someone with you that helps you learn to drive and then as soon as you drive and you pass your test and you go out by yourself you're like oh my gosh I'm doing this all alone and I kind of know what I'm doing because I've got all the skills but I'm, I'm responsible now and a lot of it a few times like I've made it up as I've gone along and I could always justify what I was doing and 
kind of explain why I did certain things. But I think it's really backing yourself and you really learn to be confident in your own skills at that point. So that's really good about being qualified and being let, let loose. And that's also a criticism as well, I guess. It depends how you look at it. Also, dealing with more difficult situations. When you're qualified, you don't have someone to fall back to all the time. Again, like I said, you've got your full support, but one, you're working more, so you're more likely to have difficult situations. Two, you are like the allocated therapist for that child or adult or patient, whatever. You are more likely to deal with the situation and have to deal with it than you do as a student. And also a not perk or a criticism is a holiday. You don't get as much holiday as a student, but the perk is you do get paid for your holiday because you accrue holiday when you're working. And that's in the NHS of the UK. And I think it's similar in lots of places that practice similarly to the UK as well. So they're like my perks and criticisms of both student and newly qualified. And now I'll talk like a bit of, about the transition. So here I'm gonna talk about more personal experience, I'd say with it and how you do that in the UK. Um, some people might find this interesting or helpful. So what you do is you complete your final placement and if you're marked off and everything is good and everything's ticked off, then you've passed. And as long as all of your other exams and essays and reports have all been marked and signed off, then you are a qualified therapist, which is crazy, but amazing feeling. And then you apply for something we call the HCPC, which is the Healthcare Professions Council. We have to basically pay the money to sign up to be on the register and also RCSLT, which is the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists. So both of those things you sign up to before you start work, or I think RCSLT you can sign up to after you've worked, have started, or at the same time, um, because they are like your insurance and things like that. So both of these things you sign up for and you pay for, just FYI. They are about £100 each, hundred and something pounds each, I want to say. That's a rough estimate. I know I need to pay mine again, so I probably should know that. But And then what you do is, some people do this throughout the course um, or throughout their final year, especially after Christmas of final year, is they apply for lots of different jobs. It's really helpful once you've done your first few applications. These applications you can just kind of tinker with a bit here and there, depending on what job you're going for. And most of them do require your HCPC registration. If it's not come through, Normally you can say, I've applied for this, I've passed X, Y and Z. So basically you're just awaiting for it to come through and that's really common as well. And then you apply for jobs, you go for interviews and then based on the interview you either get it or you don't get it. And then from there, especially in the NHS, I know it can take a while to like set you up through HR and actually employ you and get all your contracts and everything through. So I know that takes some time. And also when you're there, when you get started, that is often lots of the IT takes a while, getting your cards and all those kind of things, all exciting, but they can take some time. So just, just be aware of that. So if you're wanting or needing to work as soon as you've finished, I would start looking for jobs earlier in the hope that you can get everything set up and sorted to start ASAP. Some jobs you can start earlier as a lower level and then as soon as your registration comes through, you can then go straight up but not everywhere does that and sometimes they back pay you and sometimes they don't so they're just things to be aware of as well and then actually practicing so like I said I started in September it is a bit of a transition from again student life obviously you're used to kind of being in control of your own time to a certain extent and at my job I work eight till four which personally suits me because I'd rather be up, I feel like my brain functions best earlier on and then in the afternoon, especially later in the afternoon, woo, my concentration goes downhill basically. So I felt that was a bit of an adjustment but one thing I did love was working 8 till 4, finishing at 4 and not having anything to do. I really, really loved that and I've been very good, I know it's hard for lots of people, but I've been very good at being like right 4 o'clock is my time to go, sometimes I work a bit later but generally four o'clock is my time to go, I leave the office, I say bye to everyone and I come home. So it's an adjustment in the sense of I'm working a set block time but also your evenings are free, like you don't have any essays to do or assignments to do in the, ev in the evenings or you don't have anything kind of lurking 
like I found as a student I'd always have like oh I could do that start that essay or I could do that or I could do that but really when you start your job you don't have that because you've got that tomorrow at 8 a.m you just go back to it then so that's good as well to know that you that that's a positive I was definitely more tired and found working out my whole social life harder because to begin with you're learning a lot including the basic things like people's names and their roles and who are really important people e.g people you're going to see every day and people you aren't not going to see that often but they're still important to know obviously but you're trying to work out who are the key people that you're going to work with and then also learning kind of what your job is what you're going to be doing how you're going to be doing it what assessments you use what all of these different areas, um, how you look at referrals and how you will assess based on a referral you get in, how you will um, assess someone based on a review that someone else has previously seen them. This is more specifically related to mine, but these are all also things that would apply to all other jobs as well. But you're learning so, so many things. And you're also trying to remember all of your theories and everything behind why you're doing what you're doing so you can justify why you're doing x y or z to either a parent or to another therapist or why you think that they need extra support with this and why they should get that and maybe that's not necessary for them etc so it's all of these things that you're learning as well which does make you very tired i think i think starting a job's hard always but when you're newly qualified i feel like it's it is a lot especially the transition from being a student as well um kind of related to my social life again i think because i was tired I found it hard to then balance exercise, social life, eating well, seeing my family, health, work, like working out all of those things again was difficult. And a lot of it came down to making sure I had a few days of doing nothing a week so that I could feel like I could reorganise my life again. And even really simple things like doing washes, um, making sure the house is clean, all those kind of simple things, which as a student I feel like it's easier to manage in some ways because you're often home and you again you've got used to it so you've got used to being a student it's again adjusting to a different way of life again so that's all things that I kind of found um difficult but good as well so I think that's pretty much everything from how I transitioned from being a student to a qualified speech and language therapist if you do have any questions please do comment them down below and I'd really appreciate if you enjoyed this video give it a like and subscribe if you want to see some more. I really appreciate all your previous comments and likes and subscriptions. It's really, really lovely to see. So thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you soon. Bye.